Hello. Hello. Alrighty then. To be completely honest, the bat dress that I did last week was pretty much the death of me. So this week I needed to do something a little bit more laid back. So here we are. What's that smell? It smells like burning. I haven't even started yet. So for this week, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Now I pride myself in being an eater of desserts and pastries and baked goods. But I actually don't do a lot of baking. My video last autumn where I made the Hobbit gingerbread house was my first real dive into baking something from scratch. So I have never made a pie before. Never ever. While I answer questions today, I am going to try to make my first pumpkin pie. Don't know how it's gonna turn out. Baking for me is very hit or miss. You have to be very precise. So as someone who identifies as pure chaos, baking and me don't particularly go together. I have looked up a pumpkin pie recipe, a nice cozy sit down chat. So I have my main camera and then I also have pie cam. Normal camera. Pie cam. Sound good? Now my guess is that I should make the pumpkin filling first because the actual crust, you need to have like really, really cold butter. So I don't really want it to melt before I can, you know. I wish recipe sites weren't so confusing and out of order. Directions, please. So I just went to the store and I got all the ingredients that I think I need. <laughs> except for shortening. I scoured the baking aisle and could not find it, so it says this can be done with just butter for the crust. Pumpkin. Gross. Looks like baby food. Disgusting. Ugh. Remind me never to have a baking show. About two cups of pumpkin puree. Mmm. Oh. Oh. Mmm. Oh, nasty. Next, whisk the pumpkin, three eggs, and brown sugar together. Oh. Now, it's one thing if I was purposely trying to be a bad baker for shits and gigs, but you know what? Brown sugar always reminds me of. Maybe this is a 90s thing. I think they still make it. Moon sand. Sand castle. Get out. Oh, no. This is not aesthetic. <laughs> All right, I'm sticky. Mm, okay. Whisk the pumpkin, three eggs, and brown sugar. So while we're doing that, I will look up a question. Maisie Ann asks, what's your go-to pumpkin carving design? Once again, I feel like that, all that skit, Amanda Bynes. That's me. Am I supposed to whisk this with like an actual whisker? I made this little chart last year and I still stand by it. Because the older I get, the harder it is for me to decide what to carve into my pumpkin. I usually go with the wool pumpkin face from Over the Garden Wall. As the years go on, it's getting increasingly harder. <laughs> One tablespoon of cornstarch. I don't even know what that is. Salt. Bloop. Half teaspoon of ginger. Cinnamon. Bloop. Cloves. Okay. <gasps> oh no, no, no. Get back in there, you son of a bitch. Whipping cream. That's a lot of cream. Oh my god. Vigorously whisk. So both Marika and Dames Alamode asked what my favorite autumnal scent was. That isn't pumpkin spice. Probably anything spicy. I have a candle called Sugar and Spice, which is anything cinnamon. I don't know if this is just me, but I think this comes from when I used to do trick-or-treating in my neighborhood growing up. There was one part of the neighborhood that would always smell the same. Every single year, I don't know if it was like a Halloween tradition that they would be making a certain kind of cookie, but it smelled, it was like cookies mixed with nighttime smell. 
And sometimes I'll be out on like a chilly night and I'll get a whiff of like kind of the same kind of smell. I don't know. That would probably be my favorite. Although I think it's very specific to me. <laughs> Time to whisk. Filling will be a little thick. It's not exactly thick. It's kind of soupy. I will put that off to the side. Work on the pie crust, which I'm a little nervous about. I'll be completely honest. Okay, start with flour and salt in a large bowl. Oh, just how much do I need? Do I have to scroll all the way to the bottom? Yes, I do. Nope. Oh my God, stop. I'm not even mixing that vigorously. Cut this into six tablespoons and cube. I'll be right back. Add the butter. Use two forks. Cut the butter and shortening into the mixture until it resembles coarse meal. What? <laughs> Cut in the butter, David. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, bending my fork. Why did I need two forks? Explain. Oh, pastry chefs must be buff. I'm gonna add a little bit more butter. Cut it in. Okay, next I have to add ice water while I'm waiting for that to melt a little. More questions. Notorious Kristen asks, what are some of your favorite Halloween movies slash shows from your childhood? Ding ding. Hocus Pocus is a big one, which is interesting to see that it's kind of making a resurgence. Sleepy Hollow. I watched that when I was probably way too young to watch that, but Spooky children lead to spooky adults. Am I right? Half cup. Pretty much any Halloween Disney Channel original movie was my shit. Halloween Town, Halloween Town 2, Don't Look Under the Bed. Drizzle the cold water in one teaspoon at a time. Wow, this is specific. One tablespoon at a time. Stir with wooden spoon, <laughs> tablespoon, stir. Yeah, Halloween Town was, was and is still a classic for the Halloween season. Agatha Cromwell is what I want to be. Cause she could rock a cloak like no other. This is taking forever. It smells good. It smells like butter. Add a tiny bit more water. I don't have the shortening in there. I only have butter, so I feel like I just need a little bit more here. Just a little bit. Okay. Looks like that. So my next step, transfer the dough to a floured work surface. Floured. Fold the dough into itself until the flour is fully incorporated into the fats. Fold in the dough. Cut the dough in half. Bloop. Flatten each half into one inch thick disks. <laughs> Two little butt cheeks. So I kind of messed up because it says refrigerate for at least two hours or up to five days. I am gonna stick it in the freezer for an hour-ish and hope that that is enough. Oops. <laughs> While I wait for that to cool, let's answer a couple more questions. Cozy. Mooney Perez asks, are you an outdoor Halloween decorator or more of an interior only slash mostly kind of person? Truthfully, no, that's not a word. Truthfully, I'm definitely more of an interior kind of person. Although we do put Halloween decorations outside. Like last year we did just very simple hay bales with pumpkins on them. Mostly I have interior decorations for Halloween. Now, if I had my choice, I would be very heavily both of those. For some reason, I don't put in a ton of effort with this house. I don't think there's that many kids in our neighborhood. My goal is to one day move into a neighborhood that is very heavily trick-or-treated. People take pride in Halloween and I would love to be that really, really eccentric couple that <laughs> decorates their house to the brim. In fact, a couple years ago, we have a flagpole out front for some reason. I wanted to turn that into a, a sort of like ship mast. I even have the Jolly Roger flag that we got. I wanted to set up a little skeleton at the bottom with like a, you know, pirate outfit and a steering wheel and like lights flashing on him. Kind of like there's that exact same thing in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Caribbean. 
settle an argument for me. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? Because as Sean Spencer says, I've, I've heard, heard it both ways. But I, I just never got around to doing it. So that's one of my goals is to just really, I would love to set up entire scenes. Actually, me and Nick just watched a documentary on Amazon called Epic Home Haunts. It's about these people in California that basically open up a haunted house in their yard for people every year. I kept telling Nick the whole time we were watching it that that's kind of like a retirement goal for me is to either rent out a space or just buy a space, make a haunted house, create the sets, buy antique props and such, just like set design, add cobwebs on everything, little details that maybe no one would notice. This is a very long-winded explanation for this question, but <laughs> One year, I think I was like 12, me and my mom, we set up a haunted house in our half of our garage. So we set up like tarps and we got props and we played spooky sound effects and music. And my mom would sit at the corner wearing a mask and just like not move. Then when people would go grab the candy, of course, she would scare them. Classic. Preparing for that and planning that was like one of the best Halloweens I've ever had. That was a very long answer to that question, but here we are. <laughs> Big Boy Jules asks, if you <laughs> if you got another dog, what would you name it? I would either go two directions with it. Name it something fantasy related, like I've always wanted to name a dog Falcor, or a human name like Walter. Honestly, there is nothing more comedic to me than a dog with a very, a very casual human name. Are there any other crafty hobby slash activities that you haven't tried that you would like to? I would love to get into knitting or crocheting, kind of in the same spectrum of making your own clothes, but I have no idea how to do it. And I don't honestly know that I have the patience to do it. I think I tried when I was like 10 or 11. I got pretty far with it. I think I made like a tube once, a scarf for ants. <laughs> My grandma made this blanket and sometimes I stare at it and I'm just like, What's your favorite Halloween costume from when you were little? Unfortunately, I don't really remember many of my costumes. I do remember one year I went as Amidala. I really, really wish I could find that photo. Basically, it was this really chintzy, it was like her red gown with the uh, bulbs at the bottom. It had this like plastic headdress that was supposed to look like her hair. The one part right here digging into my forehead all night and it was so painful. But other than that, it was a good costume. My mom helped me do like the face paint and such. How is the whole self-employed thing going? You doing okay? You got any new goals? It's going pretty good. Very content with how things are right now. Career-wise, I'm, you know, don't get me started. But yeah, I've gotten, I think I've gotten a lot better with planning, being a bit more strict with myself, a freedom that I never thought I could have. But yeah, I'm really happy with how things are. 2020 feels a little bit weird in terms of goals because going into 2020, my goals were, you know, be a guest at a convention, take brand trips and do that kind of stuff. So in terms of goals, I don't honestly have a lot. As I said in my latest get ready with me that I'm pretty comfy with the numbers and stuff. And so like anything now is just gonna be kind of extra. Obviously my end end all be all goal is a million subscribers, but if we get there, good. If we don't, that's also okay. I don't really have too many goals other than that. I would like to figure out the studio space situation. But yeah, I feel like my goals are usually just weekly in terms of projects. What is your favorite video game of all time? I would say it's a tie between Uncharted 4 and Red Dead Redemption 2. And I love them both in different ways because Red Dead is something I could turn on and just escape and ride around on horseback for a little bit. Uncharted 4 was more of a linear story, absolutely beautiful, and it has everything that I love. <laughs> Pirates, ruins, adventure, photo mode. What's a genre of music that you're really grooving of late? Come autumn time, and you know, most of the year intensifies during autumn is my love for folk music. The first couple albums from Mumford & Sons. That's like my comfort music, I'll just throw that on. I love them still, but it's very unfortunate they don't make music like that anymore because it is just... Trampled by Turtles, they have some really, really good violin action going on. Abigail H. Bradford, what is your go-to cozy autumn evening movie? It's not really a movie, but Over the Garden Wall has to be my 
all-time cozy autumn content. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend. They have these really beautifully illustrated backgrounds and little vignettes that they'll show. Epitome of cozy Halloween time. Greg is amazing. Wirt is also amazing. Elijah Wood, who I met, and I pride myself in saying that I probably live in Elijah Wood's cloud storage. You curious? Okay, I'll tell you. So I met him at Rhode Island Comic Con last year. I was dressed as Eleven, <laughs> and I had him sign a picture of Frodo, dressed as Frodo. But as I was handing him the photo, he noticed my tattoo, which a lot of people ask about. It says there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. And of course, I always have to double check by reading it. So he pointed to it, and he was like, do you mind if I take a picture? And I was like, Okay, Elijah Wood. So he took a photo of it. And you know, I'd like to think with today's modern technology, maybe I'm not on his phone anymore, but I might be in his cloud. But yeah, that's one of the uh, celebrity stories I'll probably tell until the end of time. And to anyone that will listen, you're welcome. I'll do one more. La Princess Potato says ideal Halloween costume. And a lot of people ask this actually. I've definitely talked about this before on this channel, but my ideal costume for Halloween time would be the legendary <laughs> striped dress from Sleepy Hollow, which I think is quite funny because I'm pretty sure it's only in the movie for a total of like maybe 45 seconds at the most, at the very end. That dress has stuck with me pretty much my entire adolescence. To be able to make that as an adult would be a dream come true, but honestly, it's very scary and intimidating. It's a little bit of foreshadowing for this Halloween season. Oh, wow. I would say these are thoroughly chilled. Roll out the crust. Always use gentle force. You are not mad at the crust. Oh boy. crust is pre-baking for 10 minutes. We could get started on the little decorations I want to put on the top, because you know, we're making this pumpkin pie aesthetic. Cookie cutters from the craft store. Hey, yeah. A pumpkin. I kind of wanted to make like a braid around it, so I want to make little slices. We'll sidetrack here. Bit. All right, now this goes back in the oven an hour. I'm trying to braid these babies. Braid. crust here and some extra pumpkin pie filling. I don't want to waste it, so I think what I'm going to do, probably off camera, make like mini pies in a cupcake tray or something. I think we have new neighbors and I feel like maybe like a little plate of mini pumpkin pies. Who wouldn't like that? Let's do a couple more questions before we do that. Christiana Gibbard says, what are some couples Halloween costumes you've always wanted to try? One thing I've always wanted to do, the two main characters from Box Trolls, because I think they kind of look like me and Nick. Although Nick has a beard now and I won't let him shave it off, so. <laughs> Alethea Cosplay says, what thing takes up most of your time working? Making the thing or editing? That entirely depends. I think most of the time making the thing takes more time because it's usually a week long sewing project, but editing does take quite a while that I think maybe if I were to tally up all the hours that I made something, it would probably be close to editing time. Editing can usually take me anywhere from eight to like 12 hours of just nonstop. And I definitely don't give myself enough time to edit. Usually I'll do one big pass of just putting all the content where it needs to be and editing it all. And I'll do another pass where I add text, any funny edits I wanna do, 
photos, references, that kind of stuff. Put like the pops and the dings and the, all the audio cues. And I'll do one more pass where I put all the music in. I do an adjustment layer, which is basically just, you know, making something brighter or a certain color. All that together doesn't seem like it would take a long time, but when you're editing 20 to 30 minute videos, it, it definitely sneaks up on you. <laughs> This one asks, if you could have any animal, magical creature, or not as a pet, what would it be? Probably a raccoon. <laughs> I know that they're probably um, vicious. I just, I love their little hands. And when they like scoop stuff up and then run away on their hind feet, I just... Colonel Leek says, best costume design in film in your opinion? I think there's no way this isn't going to be biased. <laughs> I would say anything Colleen Atwood has done, which is a lot of... Tim Burton movies, or honestly, Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. Well, we'll find out. Coming from someone who has done a lot of research on Jack Sparrow's outfit because of cosplay, I can tell you that there are so many tiny little pieces. So just in terms of detail, I would say that movie is one of my top favorites for costume design. I'm gonna make my little mini pumpkin pies and then I will check in when it's time to put this little decal in the oven. See you in a little bit, but not really. See you in a lot of bit. Ta-da! It is done. I still have to wet it cool before me and Nick devour it. I don't think I was quite yet supposed to put the decorations on top here, but as long as I don't touch it, I think it's probably fine. Yeah. My first ever pumpkin pie. It went pretty smoothly. Obviously, I could have done a better job with the crust, but I kind of wanted it to look rustic. I don't think that quite came across. It just, it's fine. It's kind of a hodgepodge of a video, but Hopefully you were able to have some some cozy sit down time. These are the times I wish TV and movies and uh, YouTube videos had smell -o vision because you know hmm. I know I don't usually get to too many questions in these things. I will be back next week with making stuff, but I definitely just needed a break from sewing. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday. We have fun here and I will see you in my next video. Bye. So, <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> Is that the button? Probably not. No, what am I doing? No. Ah, oh, Because the shaw's... But it... I... Bleh. What are some couple... Ha, mm.